accomplish very much so as far as whether i would introduce legislation i don't know but i'm i don't see the primary as in least the way it's been happening lately as being all that productive and it certainly does cost us money there would be no need to introduce legislation because legislation was introduced two years ago and passed and on the last um election the city voters approved it so if for example i think right now the only reason that we're having a primary this year is because you have 11 at large if they'd only been 10 at large and for example there's two at mayor that we would not have had a primary this year we would have saved anywhere between eight to twelve thousand dollars so the law is passed and it's now a city ordinance because city the voters voted on it there will never be a primary unless unless someone has to be eliminated um i would be in favor of such a an update to the existing law uh first reason being that i was the last person to register for this i did i did consider running for a ward four seat but it would have triggered a primary as well um and i thought long and hard you can ask the city council the city clerk i'm sorry everybody was there waiting to go home while i was contemplating whether or not i was going to run but um yeah the idea from what i understand is is that there should if there are more than two people running opposed uh for a seat then that would trigger the primary i think that uh you know what what argument i'd love to hear uh why we need to have um a primary when it should be the best man or woman wins the seat with the most votes um in this case we've got 11 at large uh uh candidates for for five seats um there are going to be six eliminated come election day whether you have a primary or not and so um i i just i believe that indeed it's a waste of taxpayer money so i think it's meant to maybe um you know help help people hold seat hold on to seats um i think that uh primaries i mean we talk about uh, people showing up at the polls i mean we, we har hardly have enough people there are less than i think less than 3200 that showed up in the last election and um that's far shy of the close to 14,000 that showed up during the presidential election so um there is a not only a dearth of candidates a dearth of of involvement in the city and uh but i'll tell you there's not a dearth of of complaints so you know step up run for for office get involved vote if you don't like what's going on in the city vote pay attention but yes get rid of the uh, primary thank you mr sutherland next question is for you do you believe that issues such as the bearcat where there was massive opposition from the people in the community demonstrate the failure of the mayor council form of government why or why not two minutes i think certainly that whether it's the bearcat or whether it's the roundabout or whether there are a number of other issues where the city has chosen to uh, make decisions uh, between elections when we don't know where people's positions are um, and they will they say that they're open to listening to their constituents but uh, if it were put it on a ballot i think we'd have uh, different outcomes on a number of instances so um, i would say you know regardless of what my position is I would say that uh, there was, from what I can, uh, uh, from what I saw, an overwhelming opposition to spending more federal government on a militarized vehicle in a quiet community such as Keene. And so I, I do think it was a failure. I do think that there are people on city council who, who claim to listen to their constituents and fail to do so. They have their positions and damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. They'll do what they want to do. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Same question, two minutes. We live in a representative form of government. Everyone has the opportunity to speak up and express their opinions. And the vast majority of the times when, when I vote one way or the other is based on listening to the, um, the voters and also taking other information. And, and sometimes <coughs> what you have to do is you go and look at the overall picture and a lot of times you have information that other people don't have and sometimes you make a vote that's going to really tick off a, a lot of people and um, <clears throat> as growing up in massachusetts i used to read john f kennedy's profile in courage and 
for example if we go back to andrew jackson we had one individual who risked his career and was thrown out of office because he made a decision that was best for the country not for the party and i think the problem we have in right now both at the state level and the federal level is we have people that are just worried about maintaining the party improving impressing the leadership in the party and so sometimes you just have to stand up and make a decision that may really tick off a lot of people but you hopefully believe that you're making the decision for the right reason thank you mr jacobs two minutes yes uh i did vote against the bear cat and uh but i don't view that the outcome of the vote as a failure of the mayor and council form of government i think we are a democracy and uh we came to a democratic uh, conclusion uh even though i disagree with it i i, I certainly don't agree with everything uh that occurs on the council but i think the process of democracy uh is the way that ultimately we can uh, change these things so um in a way i'd have to say even though i disagree with the uh, with the bear cat vote that it was an example of successful uh, democracy and certainly not a failure of the system thank you mr freeman two minutes i have to disagree even though i appreciate that uh, mr jacobs uh, had voted against the bear cat i have to disagree with him on the point about the, the council i think that uh, it's pretty clear that the idea at least uh, politically of this particular system is a representative republic of course the point of i think the question at least seems to be that the people of Keene definitely a lot of them did not feel represented in in any way by the council's decision the, the, i was there for this vote and for the meeting prior to it and i'd never seen the council chambers so packed with people they literally had to shut down uh, access to the chambers because they'd maxed out the fire uh, capacity so they actually had the fire chief down in the first floor preventing people from going upstairs people really cared about this issue they spoke out there were some counselors who said they had received 80 to 90 percent of the contacts that were against the bearcat and it seemed to me pretty clear i i talked to a lot of people on the streets I, it, the average person in Keene was not in favor of this thing but the council went forward with it so i have to ask that question you know would uh, Keen be better off as a town. Why does Keen need to be a city anyway? You know, as I understand it, there are a couple different town configurations that Keen could have, and maybe that's something that should be looked at because there are certainly towns in New Hampshire that have a greater population than Keen. So it's obviously not about population necessarily. Why is Keen a city? Can I ask a follow-up question on that? Certainly. Um, so we have two city councilors here. I'm, I'm wondering. Um, Every year we have capital improvement program budget. Every year that is where uh, we are, uh, review the entire uh, fleet of vehicles that the city owns. Why was it so important for us to uh, go ahead and acquire the Bearcat in between um, those, those capital improvement budgets? Why was it left out of that budget? And why did it not go through the, the, the same process that every other vehicle in the city has to go through? You Why could, couldn't it wait? Every single other vehicle that the city goes through it is planned for, the cost is factored in, and so we have a, a really good individual that keeps the life of the vehicle. Sometimes we extend the life of the vehicle because it's beneficial. The difference with the Bearcat <coughs> was the Bearcat was, if you want to look at it, it, it was free to the city budget, but it wasn't free to us as taxpayers because the federal government paid for it. And so what we do is just like other grants that we get from the city government, we, I'm from the federal government, we don't, those are not considered in, and in certain cases, grants that go to the airport and grants that did a lot of the infrastructure over the last three to four years was the, from the Recovery Act. And what we did was, if we used the Recovery Act money, then the other items were taken out of the Capital Improvement Plan. Yeah, that was my understanding, that it was, <coughs> if you will, a gift to the city from, from us taxpayers. Right, uh, from our other But policies. there was, uh, I think, one of the things the council did was to, to try and be sure that we have an understanding of what it costs to operate that vehicle uh, and, to be, and that that information be brought forward to the council so that we have some sense 
even though it's quote free, it isn't really free. There are some operating ex expenses that go with it. And also to understand how it was actually being used, uh, whether, whether it was being used and, and in what way. So, uh, but as far as why it wasn't in the CIP, it's because we didn't put any capital into uh, acquiring it. I'll just challenge that and say every, there are several line item budgets, there are several line item budgets in the CIP that where federal funding or state funding is a line item. So I disagree, I think this is uh, misleading and I think that we could have waited for the proper process, whether it's the Bearcat, whether it's the Northbridge, whether it's the Roundabout, all of these things were snuck in under the, the darkness of night Pass the taxpayers. We should all be running on positions on future spending, but we're not because there's all kinds of little things that are added with found money. If you keep finding money, give it back to the people who, who deserve to have it back. Thank you, Mr. Sutherland. And sure. Uh, for the record, that will count as one of your candidate asking the other candidates questions. <laughs> Uh, just, I, I just figured I'd throw this out there. Uh, I would, if I were elected to the council, I would make a proposal that uh, the Bearcat be returned to Lenko, the manufacturer. Just take it back, drive it back, give them the keys, and say, have a nice day. Uh, we don't need it here in Keene. All right. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Next question is for you. Uh, there has been statements by most of the candidates here about the tax burden. So what, in your opinion, can be done to reduce the tax burden of homeowners in Keene? Well, I'm glad uh, I have the chance to expand on that a little bit because uh, I did talk about having things become consensual or voluntary in that you know people would be able to uh, give to the city what they thought the city services were worth. How about the city breaks down the tax document a little bit further? Right now, you know, it says there's state, and there's local, there's uh, county, there's uh, the school portion as well. So why not break down the city numbers further? How much of the city number is going to the police department? How much is going to public works? How much is going to you know fill in the other city departments there, so we can see you know what exactly these folks are getting as far as a portion of the taxes, and then allow uh, taxpayers to decide for themselves. Well, I think that you know the police department deserves. Well, I'm not really happy with them. I'm going to give them less. But I do like roads and you know snow clearing, so I'm going to give them more. Let's let people choose what they think the city services are valuable for, and then the city. Uh, departments in that case would have to be very, very judicious with how they spend money because they wouldn't be, be guaranteed the budget next year. They would only get the you know money that the people of Keene thought they deserved rather than the money they demanded by the threat of violence. So if you can change the incentives, all of a sudden you'll see these city departments whip themselves into shape as far as their budgets are concerned. Thank you. Mr. Jacobs, two minutes. Yes. Uh I think it's uh, incorrect to say that uh, city departments are guaranteed their budget. Uh, the, the budget process is uh, the, the departments have to come up with an explanation of, of how they're going to spend money. And I, and I think over the last few years, as I understand it, there's been a considerable effort and, and quite a bit of success at reducing costs, uh, learning how to maintain equipment so that it lasts longer and we don't have to purchase it. Uh, in the energy area, I think the city has been uh, very successful at, at reducing costs. Uh, we certainly have uh, reduced uh, the number of people employed by the city. Uh, that may affect services ultimately, but it is a way that uh, costs have been uh, reduced. Uh, the other side of the picture is, is revenue. As I mentioned earlier, I, I really think we have to, uh, and we are, uh, working to uh, bring uh, businesses to Keene, to bring jobs to Keene. I think uh, you know this is a difficult time, not only in Keene but elsewhere. But I think there are some opportunities that are that are being pursued by uh, the mayor and by others in the community to uh, to find ways to bring people uh, to bring jobs to Keene. And uh, I think ultimately, when we bring jobs, we bring tax money, uh, and uh, that's uh, in the long term the solution to this. Uh, I, I think uh, you can do it a little bit of. Uh, you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face if you just say, well, it's all about reducing spending. We do have to spend something uh, in order to have a community that people want to live and work in. And uh, so I, I, it's, it's a delicate balance. It's really, the, as I mentioned, uh, and I'm just repeating myself, but I think that's the biggest challenge of a city councilor to, to find that balance. 
uh, and to uh, you know maintain uh, services while uh, uh, keeping costs uh, under control. Thank you. Chris Roberts, two minutes. As I said earlier, the state is, uh, as a result of state action, we're spending $3 million extra in retirement. But also as a result of state action, we're getting at least $1.5 million less in um, money that we used to, to get. Things like room and meals tax and other money that used to come in. So basically, when you look at the school portion and the city portion, right now, it's up to about $5 million a year that the local taxpayers have to make up. And second, I can't remember the number, between 38 and 41 over the last three or four years, positions as people have retired or quit have not been fulfilled, refilled. And a number of other positions that people have left have now gone down to part-time jobs to, um, <clears throat> so we don't have to pay in benefits. So costs are going down. And pay, well, we won't say costs are going down, the rate of increase it is, is slowing drastically. The third part with the fellow candidate said the cost. As a city, <clears throat> we have a budget and the budget will tell you what every single line, num um, line number, what the cost is and for which department. To, to get what the other candidate was talking about, Mr. Freeman, was we would have to um, reverse our charter and become a town. In local towns, people then can go in and go line number by line item by line item and change the amount that they want to give. If they say, I don't want to give a million dollars to the police force this year, I'm only want to give 800,000, they as a right, everyone in the room stands up and votes 